Hi, welcome back to the Keto's YouTube channel. Today we're going to look at how to set up a radio server for Skepman. So if you already have Skepman up and running and you have distributed your certificates through Intune or Jamf or anything and now you want to set up Radius authentication uh, with a cloud service, this is what we're going to do. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the Keto's documentation and we're gonna register the Easy Radius application. So this is gonna give Easy Radius access to uh, authenticate your users and do all that stuff. First, we have to register the Ketos application. So you're just gonna click here with, with a global administrator account and you're gonna accept the permissions. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing with the Easy Radius application. Once we have registered the application in our tenant, now we can go ahead and create um, the Easy Radius. In this case, I'm gonna do it in Azure, but you can also do it straight in the Easy Radius portal. Um, the only difference is where you get built. So the, uh, the whole Easy Radius infrastructure is actually hosted by Keto, so there is no servers, no nothing you have to maintain or pay for. All you pay for is the pricing here, which is uh, here, and there's also a calculator down here, down here where you can put like your number of users and how much it's gonna cost you. There's no extra cost for anything else. Everything else is fully managed by Kios. So if we go back here, uh, we're going to search in the marketplace, select easy radius, select your plan. And then in here, we're going to enter the name of the subscription. So easy radius, Scatman. We're gonna enter the resource group where we want it. And as I said, this is only for billing. There is no resources being created or anything. It doesn't matter anything else you choose here other than the plan. And then we're gonna click review and create. And we're gonna click subscribe. And so now that the subscription has finished in the Azure site, I'm just gonna click configure account now. And this is gonna send me to the Easy Radius portal. I'm gonna log in with my Azure credential And then in here, I'll select the deployment uh, instance and I'm gonna click create instance. And now we can access it through here. Um, and instead of going through the whole Azure portal every time I'm doing all this stuff, you can just bookmark uh, your instance URL. And once I'm here, I can go to settings. So the first thing I would do, I and mean, this one is obviously you wouldn't have this, this is because I already have existing stuff with authentications, but in here, you would go to settings, you would find um, your subscription, which in this case, it would be this one, but you would probably only have one. And by default, we make you an owner, network administrator and log reader. But obviously, you can um, do as many as uh, you can add here, your group like admin group or something like that. Like if you have a PK admin group or something like that, you can add them as owners. And the difference between this one is owners are basically can do anything from canceling the subscription to adding and removing people and so on. Network administrators can manage all the radius policies and all that stuff, but they cannot manage billing. And then you have log readers, they can only lo uh, read logs. And speaking of logs, um, we recommend connecting this to your SIEM or a log analytics uh, workspace. The reason for that is if you connected and we have everything, all this stuff is in the documentation, which I'll link down below, but uh, basically we have it here. And the cool thing is you can create dashboards and have all your information in Azure if, if, if needed. So um, kind of like gives you more data if, if you require that. But going back to Easy Radius. Um, next thing, once you have set up your access and all that stuff for the subscription itself, then we can create our policies. So in here in our policies, um, in here, I have an existing one, but yours would look like this. You would enter your policy name. Let's see, video. And then you would enter your allowed IP addresses. So this is the IP addresses of your um, router. So you would go to your routers and network equipment, find the IP, external IP addresses, and you would add them. In this case, I'm just gonna add a random IP. And then you have a shared secret. Uh, by default, we just create a random secret, but you can change this to whatever you want. And um, 
then after that in here, you would have to change it. So by default, it defaults kind of like to the EZCA uh, certificate authority, but you can also do a local one. So this is where we would go back to your Skepman and you would click the get CA certificate. You would download the certificate. So once we download the certificate, we go to PowerShell wherever we download it. So in this case, it downloads. And we're going to run cert util encode skepman to skepman base64. So what it does does is just changes from binary to base64, which is required for easy radius. So once we run that, we go back to radius. And uh, we're going to select your local CA. And then we're going to click that it's a root CA and we're gonna upload our base64. So now we have here our trusted certificate. So basically any certificates issued by this CA will be trusted. If you have multiple CAs, you could add more. Um, and then next thing we have to do is create our uh, certificate for the server. So in EAP TLS, the server authenticates to the client and the client authenticates to the server. So the server requires a certificate as well. Since I only have the community version of Skepman, I cannot create certificates in it. Um, so I'm going to do it with EZCA. But if you have that one, you would download the CSR, then you would upload the certificate, upload the root CA, and, um, and then you would click Save. But since we don't have that, we're going to use EZCA, uh, which is our uh, integrated certificate authority. And in here, I'm just going to select a random CA that I have. And I'm just going to click request certificate and easy radius is just going to request it. And it will also take care of, um, renewing it and all that stuff. So I'm just going to click request certificate. And now we have our server certificate and we'll need that, uh, later for, uh, the engine setup. And you can see here, it'll be automatically rotated and everything. So we don't have to care about that anymore. Next up is our policies. So up until now, we have set up kind of like the radius uh, server side of things, like what CAs we assume and all this stuff. Now we have to set up the access policies, who actually has access to authenticate. So let's say you're a school. So in this case, you might want to create a policy for students. And you can enable password authentication. Um, since uh, Skepman only has OCSP and they don't support a certificate revocation list, I would recommend selecting OCSP. So uh, it checks revocation. And then the next thing you want to do is uh, either you can leave it as is and you just have one VLAN and you just call this like scab policy. Or the cool thing about this is you can actually make it that it matches whatever you put in the certificate with uh, an entry ID user or an entry ID device. So if you created device certificates in Intune. And here you can select where in this, uh, in this certificate you put the information and then whether you have an AD device ID or uh, Intune device ID. And if you have an Intune device ID, one of the cool things you can do is check that it's compliant. So if the, the device is not compliant, then uh, it will not be accepted. And you can also check group membership. So you could check whether or not uh, it's part of a group. So in here you would go to enter ID and you would select your group ID. So I believe I have a student's group. Yeah. So then I would just copy the object ID and paste that here. And then, you know, whenever you add someone to that group, they will get access and, and all that stuff. Another cool thing you can do, although I don't think Skepman supports uh, EKUs on the basic one, you can create your own uh, EKU or select one of the pre-existing ones and check that that, that EKU is there. Um, and last thing you can do is assign different VLANs. So you could create this policy and let's say you assign a static VLAN and it's just VLAN one. So then we add this policy. So now we have this one and we can create a secondary policy. Um, let's call it like user policy or something like that. And in this case, let's say we want to match it, but we want to do it with users. So let's say we put the username in, in the subject name, and then you can same check uh, group membership and we'll do all that stuff. And you can assign it to a different VLAN. Uh, you can also do dynamic VLAN. So if you have it in part of the certificate, you do like VLAN dash something or something like that, 
you could add it here and say like, hey, remove uh, the first part of the certificate and just leave the, so, so this would be kind of like a replace, replace this with empty and then whatever the rest of that subject alternate name is, it will take that as a VLAN value. So let's say we add that policy and now it's gonna go in order. So it's gonna check the first policy and if you don't uh, meet the requirements, it'll go to the second one. If you wanna change the order, you can just click the arrows and now they're flipped. And if you have more policies, it will go down all the policies. So that's how you create the access policies and the server and all that stuff. So then after that, we would click the create policy. And now the policy is, oh, did I click the wrong one? And now the policy is saved. So next up, um, you would go to your uh, to your router. You would enter one of these IPs. If your router allows multiple IPs, you can enter all of them. These ones are distributed in different availability zones. So make sure you have the highest availability, but they all go to kind of like the same cluster of ready services. Um, then you would enter the, the, the secret that you created for that IP and you would connect the EAP TLS and then you're good to go. Um, other things that, that you can do is do it through the Wi-Fi uh, in Intune, and I'm not gonna cover fully this in the, this video. You, you can watch other videos that we have on the channel for that. But basically you enter your Wi-Fi name, you enter the server certificate, uh, the subject alternate names and the subject name of the certificate so that it will automatically trust it. And then you can select uh, a SCEP certificate that you have created so you can make it the, the computers connect automatically to um, to the Wi-Fi whenever they see it. So that's how you set up your Skepman radius um, combo. Uh, thank you for watching and please let us know if you have any questions. All the documentation will be linked down below. And thank you for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.